Gaming the Enthusiast, how are you doing? Welcome back, I hope you're all well and I hope you're having a great day. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking through some of the options on cylinder heads for my supercharged mini city project. Now I will caveat that there are other heads available for minis and some of the information I'm giving you, these heads span about 30 years of production. So valve sizes, change over that period of time and some of the specs I might be giving you might have changed and varied a little bit over the years. I will say, and I'll get me excuses in early, I am no expert on this and I've done my research on Google. So if you spot something that doesn't sound right, please do correct me, I will not be offended. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about the main differences and features of those cylinder heads and why I think the 12G 295 is going to be the best for my supercharged setup. And I'm going to be taking this head up to Stuart Gurr at VMAX SCART to get the head modified so it's got the correct chamber sizes and valve sizes to perfectly match the supercharger setup for my car. So I thought it'd be useful just to talk through some of the options, the heads that you can use on the 998cc Mini. Now I'm fortunate to have all three of these sitting up in my loft and I thought it'd be interesting to look, look at some of the differences between them. So the first head is a CAM 4810. This is a standard 998cc A plus cylinder head found in Minis and Metros from the early 80s through to the 90s and they are very common. Secondly, we've got the head that we're going to go for. So this is a 12G295. I believe it was fitted to the 998 Cooper and 1100s in the 60s and they're now becoming quite rare and difficult to get hold of. Good ones anyway and they're considered kind of the holy grail for 998cc engine tuning. And then finally, we have the 12G940. These come from the 1275 range of engines, including MG Metros and some Minis post 1970s. They've got big valves, they have big flow, and they've got a lot of potential. So why are we not using that one? I will explain why in a moment. So I've just turned the heads over now, just to show you some other differences between them. This is our standard head. This is the 998 A plus standard cylinder head, the CAM 4810. This has, out of all the heads, the smallest valve sizes. So this has, they're approximately 28 millimeter inlet valves and 25 millimeter exhaust valves also has a chamber size so we talk about the chamber here being the the amount of cc's liquid fluid you can get in there so that determines or helps determine the compression ratio on the engine it's approximately 25 cc's on this head if we move on to the 12 g 295 cylinder head. This has 25 millimeter exhaust valves, the same as the CAM 4810, but the inlet valves on this are 31 millimeters, so we get bigger inlets. And the combustion chamber, the volume in here, is also increased, so we're up to around about 28 cc. So for supercharging, actually, this one is ideal because we need to lower the compression ratio because we're going to be compressing the charge. If we were just to fit this cylinder head on without doing any other modification, so we weren't supercharging, we would actually be lowering the compression ratio of the engine. And it actually, although the valves are bigger and it's got better porting, it may actually go worse. So if you were going to use this on a naturally aspirated engine, you would probably have it, have to have it skimmed to get the combustion chamber volumes down to get your compression ratio correct. And then finally, we move on to the big daddy. This is quite a big valved head. 
Um, the combustion chambers on this though, it varies quite a bit, but anywhere between 21 to 25 cc. So again, if we were gonna use this for supercharging, we would need to increase the combustion chamber volume to lower the compression for supercharging. This has, again, they're approximate, the inlet valves are just under 36 millimeter and the exhaust valves are just over 29 millimeters. There is a very important point to note on this 12G 940 cylinder head though. If you actually line up these combustion chambers with the cylinder block on the car, these valves will actually, they overlap and will interfere and clash with the block. So if you're gonna use this head, you have to do what's called pocketing on the block, which is to take away some of the metal on the block to make clearance for those uh, valves. So that's quite a, quite an extreme modification. And if you were, but if you were doing a really high performance 998, um, it would be worth it because this is a very good start point for a cylinder head. So these valve sizes tell us a lot about performance. Generally, bigger valve sizes mean better breathing, especially at higher RPM. Better breathing means more power. Um, I'm no expert though. I think you can probably go too big, especially on a small bore engine. You need to, you do need a free flowing head, but you also need good velocity and speed of air through the engine or through the head as well. So I would imagine if you went too big, that would cause a problem. So in terms of airflow, the standard head is by far the most restrictive. The 12G295 with its bigger valves, bigger ports, flows significantly more air than the standard 998cc head. Um, but the 12G940 really is in a different league. It's designed for a 1275 big bore engine rather than a small bore engine. Now let's look at the ports and this is where it becomes really obvious and you can really see why this CAM 4810, the standard 998 A plus head is really restrictive. So if we look down into the actual ports themselves, you'll see in comparison, the 12G295 has much bigger inlet ports. Um, in fact, comparing the 12G295 with the 12G940, there isn't that much difference in the size of the inlet and exhaust ports. And if you look down in them, you can just see the valves are pretty much unshrouded. That means you get good airflow. Nothing's restricting around the valves. But in this head, this doesn't actually have valves fitted in the moment, but you can see just the, the port sizes are much, much smaller. I'll just try and give you some a rough idea, actually. So if we look at this, the outer port size on the inlet, around about 29 and a half mil. But if you go down in the actual throat itself, we're down to sort of 23 mil. On the 12G295, outer's around about 33, 34 mil. And then we go down into the throat and we're at about 27. And the 12G940, again, around about 33, 34 on the outside and then down into the throat we are around about 27. Um, when we look at the exhaust ports as well we got 23.4 19.4 And then actually, oh, let me measure that again. 19.82, arguably the same size exhaust ports. It's all about the inlet though. The inlet on this 12G295 is much, much better. Another point to note as well, is that this standard 998 A plus engine still has a bypass in it, which goes onto the water pump. The 12G295 does as well, 
but this 12G 940 head doesn't have a bypass on it. Uh, in terms of valve springs, now this will vary quite a bit. This 12G 940 has single valve springs. This 12G 9295 has double valve springs. And this standard head would have had single valve springs for each valve. So my next job is to get this head up to Stuart Gurr and then he can start doing the modification work on that head to match the supercharger setup. Now I will obviously have this car rolling roaded by Stuart once it's done so it'd be really interesting to see how the power develops. Like I say I'll be more than happy if I see 70-ish brake horsepower but I'll just give you some idea of the starting point. So this is a rolling road chart uh, done by the previous owner. So this was back in 2023 after it was tuned by AC Dodd. So a standard 998 Mini ranges between 39 and 42 brake horsepower, depending on what year it was. Um, this, with the Stage 1 kit, after the tune by AC Dodd, has a healthy 50.3 brake horsepower now, which is a 25% increase on standard. That's quite phenomenal. I mean, considering the weight of a Mini as well, an additional 10 or 11 brake horsepower is a pretty significant increase and will improve the overall performance of the car, the top speed, the 0 to 60 times, and, and actually it will do all of that because it's been tuned up properly. It will do that and probably deliver improved fuel economy at the same time. So it really, really is a win-win situation. In terms of the torque, again, it varies a little bit, but a standard 998 pushes out around about 52 pounds feet of torque. And this is now pushing out 57.9 or, or 58. So again, that's a healthy 12% increase on torque from standard. And, you know, that's not radical changes. That is a stage one kit. So typically that would be air filter, exhaust manifold, exhaust system, and then a new needle in the carburetor and a new spring. They don't really change that much more on a stage one kit, but you are wasting your money if you just buy a stage one kit, throw it on and expect to get the power because it needs setting up properly afterwards. And that's where this has really had the advantage of being tuned by AC Dodd to get the full potential out of that stage one kit. So bang for buck in terms of increase, percentage wise increase in performance, that is really, really good value and it's worth paying the money to get someone like AC to tune it up properly. So there we go, I hope that was informative to you. And if you hadn't guessed by now, yes, I am going with my heart. So I'm not taking the sensible option or the logical option. I'm doing the supercharger setup. It may not necessarily be everyone's choice, but it's an itch I wanna scratch and I'm sure I'm gonna have some fun doing it. Now I am gonna do some other upgrades to the car which I'll talk about in a future episode, but one of the main things I will be doing is upgrading the clutch on the car. You cannot expect to increase the power of the engine and for the original clutch to take that power. It will need to be upgraded. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, please do consider subscribing. And if you want to drop a comment, I do read all the comments. So thank you very much last week for everyone that left comments about the choice and options of supercharging, turbocharging, or keeping it naturally aspirated. I'll catch you again in the next one.